Welcome back everyone to episode 3 of our Beginner's Guide to Factorio, um, on version 15 I should say. So there's been a lot of things I did off camera as I said I would. We actually started wiring up these smelting centers and actually getting more of the iron output fed into the smelting inputs. Uh, what happened here is I left this line more or less the same where it was so that you have a reference point from the last episode. And then um, just in order to get these two lines, the bottom two lines were originally connected, went underground and went over to the second smelting center. And I actually want to start off the episode by changing that just to make it something which makes a little more sense, which is to have this um, upper portion of the iron. I'm going to combine these two into one line. I'm going to combine these two into another line. Um, right now, there's a reason why the bottom line is only having this one input. I'll get to that in a second. But basically, what I want to do is have the top two lines feed to the further smelting centers. Uh, this makes the most sense. And now we're going to actually get rid of this and have this feed into that one. Um, this makes the most sense because basically, as these come off, like let's say that instead of having an iron ore deposit here, I have train stations which are dumping iron ore over. Um, the ones on the top should go as far to the right as possible because if we didn't, if the first one on the top went down, it has to go underground belt to, to jump the three other lines and then do another underground belt to get past the uh, the line we need for the actual out our inputs for the smelting center. So basically, to avoid doing two underground belts, we just have the closest line peel off, and then the next closest line goes to the next one, etc., etc. So doing the top line down to the first one is not it was not the correct solution. Anyway, so we'll just fix that up as we've now done. Now the reason why we only have one down here, you can see on the right that the available resources is only down to four, now three iron ore. Even though it's sitting on top of uranium, these burner mining drills only mine non-uranium things. They'll, they'll mine anything but uranium. And the reason is, in order to mine uranium, you need to put, as this fancy looking electric mining drill indicates, or should indicate, you uh, you need um, sulfuric acid to be pumped in from some kind of uh, pipe. And not having that, these will not extract uranium. But the reason why that's uh, an important point to make here and why I have this here instead of just one of these is it, it appears that if I put this instead, so this is done, right? We'll just pop that up. If I put this electric mining drill on just like as far on top of this as possible, what I think we'll find is that this comes to a, a pause. It actually pauses. Um, I think, yeah, that's, that's actually kind of a lot. We might even move it just as a showpiece real fast. Let's just move it one further. So I just want, yeah, there it is. 416, it supposedly can get 416 iron ore here. But most of the time, this is going to be obviously attempting to pull uranium. And I don't know how the electric mining drills work if they just scan their five by five grid for a resource. Like right now it's stopped just because this line is stuck. But if we just do something like No, 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 sorry. Like that, solve that problem. So let's see what, ha if this stays going on, then uh, I'll eat my words. But what I, what I think is happening, or at least I encountered a bug that where this would stop, it would stop functioning. Oh, like this, perfect. Um, and even though it still has on the right-hand side, you can see 406 more iron ore to extract. What I think it hap what happened is, it went to a uranium deposit and it won't pick it up because there's no sulfuric acid. So this is exactly why I'm avoiding this area and we're gonna have to use um, the electric mining drill only in areas where it doesn't touch any of the uranium, which we still can do. If we get this here, it doesn't touch any uranium and it'll work fine. So we'll go ahead and straight this line out. We'll get rid of this mess of a configuration. And there we go, we're back on track. And it will eventually fix this lineup in a much more elegant way. But for now, it's fine. It's going to provide more than enough just even extracting like this. Now, because we're letting this line go, we might as well get this one to go join as well. And there we have. These two are now onto the first smelting center. These two are now joining onto the second. 
And we have a third one going here, and eventually we'll also have a fourth. We're, we're going to run over. I'll just leave the groundwork for that, and then we'll leave it. We'll leave it be. Okay, there. Now on the right hand side, off camera, I also did the copper um, setup as a. Shouldn't be a surprise. I mentioned that I was going to do this. And I only have one functioning copper smelting center just because that's all I think we need. Uh, right now, copper, very low priority until we get to green circuits. Um, you also see that uh, what I've done here is also combine two lines into one. Again, I think the number for getting 12 stone furnaces per side, I think you want like 9 or 10 electric mining drills per side. Uh, if it's on yellow belt. Uh, anyway, so that's why I'm just combining these. I prefer to have more of an, like a, I prefer not to have an, an input issue for the smelting centers, although it doesn't really hurt. Um, but uh, it just means that we have to use less smelting centers to get maybe slightly less of an output, but anyway. Um, so I'm doing the same thing, combine two lines, but one other thing that I'm showcasing here is it's a good habit to get into to balance your inputs, I mean your smelting inputs, so that uh, each of these smelting centers is working about the same. That way if you have a shortage of copper on one side, it can be replenished by, you know, hopefully a surplus of copper on the other. One other thing to mention before we get into f further progress for this episode is I did expand coal a little bit. We don't need it quite yet because we only have three smelting centers set up and these are currently totally saturated anyway. What is going on here? Oh, these are just totally done. Anyway, um, I did do a balancer on this line just because we have four on this side and three on this side. Uh, and actually this one is, no, never mind. It still has stuff to mine. But uh, how you do balancers, just to showcase here, like this one we did to the left, we can do it to the right or the left, doesn't matter. The one that's in the middle following the line goes off to the side and then comes back. And the one that's on the side just drops down and comes back. And that's your balancer. I just left that here as a something that I could do quickly on camera. But it doesn't do a perfect job. It just does an okay job of balancing lines. There is an, an issue I ran into at some point where I noticed that it wasn't actually balancing. It balances the sides, but it doesn't balance. There's one like, test case where it failed. Anyway, now what are the things we're going to do in this episode, which I should, probably should have mentioned first. One, we're going to establish our main bus, and this is nice. In order to establish our main bus, we actually need to figure out where our main bus is going to go. Now, I have already scouted around the map off camera. I didn't do it in this playthrough, but when I first loaded up different seeds to test them out, I explored the map to see um, what the rest of the map looked like. But it's a good idea to, when you want to have your main bus run in a direction, it's a good idea to like run down and see what you might run into if your main bus continues in that direction. So this, if we run our south, it looks like mainly what we're gonna run into is a biter base. That's a pretty big one. I think we're gonna have like a small amount of problems. I don't wanna get too close because I think anything from this biter base will actually kill me. But um, we'll be able to clean that up later. We won't be able to do it now. But that's, I think that's enough space to get our main bus going. Another concern that you should keep an eye out for is even if the biter base is pretty far away, if there's not a lot of trees between your sources of pollution and the biter base, they'll still be sending attacks. Now, we'll try to avoid that, but basically it looks like for if we go to the map, and by the way, it's a trick. I should wait until it gets dark, but a trick is if it gets dark on your map, it won't be as dark in the map. See, so I'm, well, here. If we zoom in enough on the map, you can see there's like a little grain to it. That's your indication that you're actually in the map mode. Also, WASD moves the map, not your character. So if it gets dark at night and you want to see what's going on, you can actually use the map and zoom in, and this will be much more illuminated than your actual character. Now, that doesn't matter for us because we have a light mod on, which um, allows us to have a great illumination even, even at nighttime. But if you don't have that, it can be very useful to... Let's see, where do we want to go? I think here. Um, to activate that little trick, use the map. Now we're gonna have the main bus just run right here. I've just decided randomly that that's where it'll be. Now if this is, I like to put a little space right here just for possible vehicles to go through or I don't know, something in like future proofing. 
I think it looks nice if all of them have this little gap so that, like I said, I, I usually put like a concrete path down here and I use it for vehicles or just for running side by side without having to get stuck on the belts, especially when these belts eventually get upgraded to like red or even blue, probably not blue, but at least red. It's, it makes it harder to run off. Now, um, we're gonna carry this over, but one, two, three, four. That's for iron. Those are the four that'll move over. Then we need two, I like to leave two space between. So then one, two, three, four. Okay, so while we're doing all this, by the way, I should be ABC, always be crafting. I'm just gonna get a bunch of transport belt. I made a bunch of iron gears off camera and even some circuits, just so that if we run into any shortages, It'll be really easy for me to um, just um, pocket craft them. So this is one, two, three, four for iron, space, and then four for copper. So this is the bottom most one because it's the furthest away. So let's run this one all the way back over now. And I think I'll also leave a space here. Underground, just I'll have all the copper ones so that again we have, if we need, the ability, I want this one to be here. Uh-huh, it's off. By one, that's fine. Uh, so if we need to run vehicles north-south, we'll have a, a space where they don't have to run over four continuous lines of copper. Now, we have one here, next one will go here, next one will go here, next one will go here. So this is four for iron, and now we need four for copper. So let's leave space of four, and this is the way I set up my main bus. One, two, three, four. Actually, we can do all of them, but I'll take this down here as well. There it is. So the main bus for me is groups, bundles of four, and this is obvious because our underground belt, at least our yellow underground belt, only has a distance it can traverse underground of four. So if we had any more than four in a, a bundle, then we wouldn't be able to use underground belt. We'd have to use these, go the main bus would have to use underground belt, which means you'd need five plus underground belt going north-south instead of just having one to cross. And that's obviously not good, so we want to use these in, in groups of four. I'm also leaving space four between copper and iron, although you probably can get away with three with most all the other ones. I like to leave four here, which is enough for a roboport to fit down. We also are gonna have usually two in the middle, The Two in the middle will be where our ele large electric power lines will run down so that power is another commodity which will run down the bus. And we'll see more of that later, but for now, just take my word for it, we'll be leaving a space of four in between um, copper and iron. Now we actually have a second line of iron we can grab here. There we go. If, well, if I connect it, there it is. Uh, now one thing to say is when this line f comes just like what we did with our whoops, just like what we did with our um, iron ore and I should say our copper ore is what I referenced we're going to balance these lines when they come out and this is going to be a four way balancer so if you aren't sure how to do that you can just take note here um, okay so underground duh, uh, uh. There we go. I'm gonna be making it from scratch, although I think I have this blueprinted or, no, never mind. I canceled all my blueprints for this. <laughs> okay, then this one goes away, this one goes away, this curves in, this curves in, this curves out, this curves out. And then we have two more. And this is your perfect four line balancer. Uh, well will be as soon as I put another splitter in. So basically the two outside ones merge, I mean the two left merge, the two right like balance, the middle two balance, then the outer two balance, and then all four, uh, the left two, which are now a different left two than began because they've been mixed up a bit. These merge again, I mean balance again, and then these balance again. So that is what our four way, four line balancer looks like. And we'll see a lot of that on the line, the main bus, because it's it's pretty useful to continue to balance as we go. So let's do this one more time. That, okay, one, two, 
three, four, like that. Whoops, oh, that's my underground, so it goes here. There we go. Uh, let's see, one, so this will go here, here, split, out, out, move this, move this, come up from underground. I mean, I could just follow this model over here, but for some reason I just decided to do it in my head all over again. So even this will balance one line, even if you don't have inputs on their lines, it still balances all four of these lines, which means that if we have enough, one will become four, evenly balanced. And that's what happened here. So that's another good reason to balance early, because even if you aren't using all your smelting lines, um, now whenever I draw off any one of these lines, this one will still be balanced over all four, which is pretty cool. Okay, so that's our main bus all set. We are for now temporarily just gonna run power on the outside of this line. We'll leave it there for now. Okay, so main bus is set up. What's the next deal for us? We're going to get green, uh, red science going. That's another thing I forgot to talk about is I also crafted, pocket crafted some red science. Let's go up and dump in, well, I guess I only need half of this. So 25 and 25, good. So we'll go ahead and do steel processing, which takes 50, which is why, although I had 60, I only picked up 50. We'll research this, which is just something to do while we're making our red science, and then AVC, always be crafting. You know, we have a fair amount of transport belt. Let's go ahead and make a lot of circuit while we're doing nothing else. Because I also made a whole bunch of assembly machines, which we're gonna need for our green circuit production. All right, so leaving a little bit of space for future proofing, we'll start over here. Let's just start right here. This will be our input line for all the red science, which means I really should be doing this with assembly machines first. Now the very first one is actually gonna be a gear production center. Then we go one, two, one, two, one, and one, one, two, one, two, one. I think this is not right. It should be two to finish. See this one, da, da. yeah. I think I actually need it over here. So gear wheels, red science. Yeah, I think that works. Um, basically we have gear wheels being produced because let's just take a look at the math here. To produce red science, we need one copper plate, which we have, we don't have to do any assembling for that. It's already available on the line. And then we also need iron gear wheels. It takes five seconds to produce the science pack, and gear wheels are made every 0.5 seconds. So, obviously, one iron gear wheel producing assembly machine can supply for 10, since these only take, uh, these are need one gear wheel every five seconds, and this produces every 0.5 seconds. So, one to 10 is the ratio we want to observe. Let's get this as gear wheel, and this will be red science. Now, I can also do shift right click, and shift to copy this template and then shift left click. I'm holding shift and I just left click down the line to get the rest of these copied over to the template I want. And there that is finished. I don't have the next one. We're not gonna do the next one quite yet. Let's get red science up first. So this is again following our usual two, 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 one thing, but we'll just, uh, we'll have one left over. Only one has a bookend basically. The, the left side doesn't. Okay, so this is our input we'll get right here actually from copper. Now here we're gonna have an input for iron, which means I'm gonna have to use, whoops, this. Now it's going the wrong way, but you could just press R to reverse the direction. So that means this one will be right here. Split it right there, split it right there. I'm also gonna to wanna to split over somewhere down here when I, I'm gonna do this design mirror this design down here. So one, two. So this will produce 20 
my goodness, 20 uh, red science at a time. So I guess that's every five seconds this will produce 20, which is a pretty good number. I have this, we will see that this will be a template for us, but I, I don't think you really need more than one of these. I you always leave space for a second one just in case we hit really late game and red science is actually going to slow us down, which is pretty rare. This one will also go here. Okay, there we go. And this will be disconnected here, I guess. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so let's shift right click for our gear. Shift left click to paste, shift right click our red. And then we do this, same thing as we already did. And last thing, we gotta place these Voila, all set except for we need our yellow inserters and actually what we want are blue inserters for this until we get the first tier of, oh actually I don't think we need to split off from copper again. I think the way I normally do it is just to split it here. And I'm off by one anyway, which we'll see the reason why in a moment. I want this to be here. Okay, so we'll go here, we'll split off I don't think we need that here. This one will go here. This one will go down, go underneath. And now it still has to go over one. Uh, maybe it has to go two. Yeah, like that. Okay, there we go. What I'm doing here is I want, since these Red Science needs two things. It needs copper plate, it needs gear wheels. I'm gonna put both of those items on each half of the transport belt. So the copper will be on the inside because gear wheels, when they're output, will be on the outside since inserters always dump their output on the opposite side of the transport belt. So it's important to know that. The only thing we're missing to get this started is the inputs itself, which we can get quickly. Voila. And then the other thing we need, okay, we need iron. Okay, that's set. So the inputs are now satisfied, but we need power. And it looks like all we're missing is one power pole. And there we go. So you can see that the trick I've done here is just to put one transport belt behind this line to, to force this copper plate not to have priority. If I just remove this, we can do a demonstration here. If I have this one removed, this one will just absorb the whole line. So we don't wanna do it that way. So now we have iron gear wheels down the outside. The only thing we need to do is get inserters to start supplying the goods for our red science production. And now red science is being produced, just like that. Now we'll reverse the inserter for the bottom, but basically just doing the same thing. Oops. And we can see red science is already flowing on the bottom since the top is being produced. Top is producing, I should say. Okay, we're all set. So that's red science production, and it'd be a good point for us to book Yes, yeah, so you can see I've already done it here, but I have blueprinted. <laughs> this is, I mentioned that I do several takes before these are done. So we blueprint this. I would start right at the splitter and take it just to the end of the assembly machines. Um, this is what we want. So we can see we have the splitter in the beginning, just fairing copper to both sides. You don't need more than one splitter, I think. Uh, I mean, you don't need more than one copper input line. That's why I have this one just being split. Otherwise, we could have one input here and this could have been a second, this could have been a second input down here. But I think it's not necessary. I've never seen it as necessary. So we're good. Now red science being produced. What we need, obviously, is now some lab set up so that we can, we can make use of this. I'm just going to go to the east side, to the right side of this copper patch, because I, I don't like to build on top of the patches. I like to mine them. Especially this one is probably going to be very useful as soon as my initial copper patch dries up. So I think that's far enough. Let's go ahead and drag it down here. Because I'm imagining that 
green science will probably be right here as well, just so we can get um, these two dip sciences started immediately. And then blue science, since we have oil right here, conveniently enough. Oh, is this? No, it's not dark yet. Keep checking the wrong time. I want to show the map trick. But oil's right here, so we can probably just do blue science right here. And then blue science will feed in. So, anyways, let's take a look at the, the labs. Start putting them down, let's say here. Is that far enough down? Maybe. We made our decision. Now this is only gonna be 18 labs because I made 18 off camera and I didn't, I want to do 20. So one, two, five, seven, this is eight. Let me just put like a little placeholder marker to indicate to me that this is 10 right here. And this is just eight. Okay, so we have 10 done here, eight here. We'll put another two down and then I'll put another line. Just, I like to be able to count my labs in groups of 10. Oh, okay, here's the map, the really dark. We go back and zoom in and hey, you know what? It's not so dark after all, is it? Now, no, this only works as far as your vision extends. So, you know, but still that compared to the uh, smelting center up here is really dark. <laughs> so that's the trick I wanted to show. Let's go up and grab those other two labs. They're not doing anything anyway. Um, we'll do green science in the next episode. Probably didn't need to run up here just to grab these but they are the, the crowning two labs to make our, our total number 20. Okay, so ABC always be crafting. We have a good amount of green science actually already available because I did some pocket crafting. I think the best thing for us to do is to keep making electronic circuits. Electronic circuits and iron gear wheels are just like the two staples. You always need those. All right, so we'll feed this down this way. At some point, it's gonna join a line become only half. So we'll just do that pretend join here. Now we're gonna go run all these labs. I went too far, no. It was intentional. Okay, good. We have to run both electric pole and then transport belt. So we're just gonna have to do these one at a time. No, I missed it. Got a very narrow window to get this right. And now looks like we're gonna need more inserters. Great. Well, it's a good thing we got all this, all these green circuits, because we're gonna need a bunch of transport belt. I mean, uh, sorry, inserters. So, okay, stop making that. Thank you. This is what I need. Pull, pull. Ah, oh, yeah, this doesn't have power yet. So let's go ahead and get power while we're making the inserters. This is so ugly, but it'll all eventually be replaced. Ah, it's terrible. It'll all eventually be replaced by large electric poles. So just know that I hate this as much as you do. And one day it will leave, it'll go away. All right, so it's not taking anything because we haven't set up a new research yet. At this point, we can just start setting up any red research because we have automatic red science production and plenty of labs with which to do research. In fact, I'm pretty sure we're going to finish before this one even gets done. Ah, we just beat it. Next one, let's go ahead and get military. Of course I need military. I need to be able to defend myself. Now, a note. These labs have seven total possible inputs. Oh, wow. That was really quick. Bullet damage, I guess? Um, the reason why we have we need labs on every half of a thing, and you can get two here, we can get another two here. Then we're gonna have to go to the other side, get two here, and even one more on yet another transport belt. So you can see it's kind of a, a pain to, to get these labs. You don't have to set them up in a long line as I've done here. Another popular strategy, if I can just make one really quick, is to set them up in a grid. Now I've done some experimentation on this, so you could just do like this. Um, any size grid will work, just as long as it's a square. So let's just do a three by three for simplicity. And then what you're gonna have is 
you draw from the main bus or, or from the science this way with two because again we still need seven total beakers and then here you draw off, whoops with another two lines so you have two here two, two here two here and one more here and then you just have inserters which always feed in one direction and what happens is oh, we got done with this stuff too quickly what happens is as this lab um, acquires beakers the lab down the line from it will take the beakers it still needs so the reason why I find this inefficient is that anytime one beaker finishes like say over here it grabs from the previous one which means it'll grab from the previous one and you'll have you can have the the labs previous labs can actually stop functioning momentarily and that's especially true when you get your um, your inserter bonus going when you have an inserter bonus of two they'll sometimes take two at a time and it'll leave one starved for any research for a moment anyways that I this is a more it's more or less equivalent to mine but I think it might be fractionally slower and because I don't really care about space the one thing I don't at all like um, I'm not at all stingy with is taking up a lot of space for everything in fact I like to leave a lot of space for everything to future proof things but I think we've done everything that we want to do for this episode so as I said next time we'll set up green science we'll get that thrown on over here and it, which is going to allow us to do any kind of research we want with red or green science which is quite a few things um and i don't know what else we'll be getting done probably we'll do some military stuff get some military basic military production going especially now that we're oh look we can get heavy armor and stuff um, so anyways off camera what am i going to do i think off camera what i'm going to do is replenish my supplies of inserters and transport belt we're a little bit low we'll get probably like 400 of that 50 more inserters so we have a whole bunch in my inventory ready to go um, i'll need some more assembly machines a lot more for green science production and oh i know what we'll also do we'll also get up green circuit production i'll show you how to do that so next time we'll have green science green circuits and that's probably enough for the next episode but until then thanks for watching and take care